Isoprene is a molecule that molded most of the world that we have today and was responsible for many of the luxuries that we possess. Originating in both Central and South America, rubber was first used by native tribes in the Amazon basin as rubber balls as early as 1200 BC. Even Christopher Columbus saw natives on the island of Hispaniola playing with heavy rubber balls made of plant gum rubber that he brought back to Spain with him to substitute for the inflated animal bladders that they had been using. However, when he introduced the product to Europe, it wasn't very successful due to the colder European climate. While on a research trip to Peru, French scientist Charles Marie de la Condamine viewed members of the Omegas tribe in Ecuador collecting tree sap from the caoutchouc trees and holding it over a fire, then molding it into a variety of shapes. Fascinated by the product, La Condamine took raw sap back to Paris, but without the preservation through smoking, the sap remained as it was when harvested, which was essentially a sticky lump. After La Condamine's failure in 1823, Charles McIntosh used naphtha as a solvent to convert rubber into a pliable coating for fabric. This was unsuccessful, again due to the colder climate in Europe, which caused the rubber to stiffen on the clothing. There are many trees and plants that are responsible for the supply of latex that goes on to create rubber. Most of them belong to the Euphorbia family, which include poinsettias, some succulents, deciduous and evergreen shrubberies, snow on the mountain, ficus elastica, parthenium argentatum, and even dandelions produce latex, even though they are not Euphorbia. However, the best supplier is Hivana brasiliensis, which is a tree that is native to Brazil. The natural polymer of rubber is the molecule isoprene. With five carbons, it is the smallest natural polymer. And it was Michael Ferrarde who established that the chemical formula of rubber was a multiple of C5H8 in 1826. The structure of isoprene is usually written with two double bonds on the opposite sides of two adjacent carbon atoms. Natural rubber is formed when isoprene molecules bond together end to end. This polymerization produces a cis double bond. However, isoprene contains a single bond between two carbon atoms allowing rotation, with the possibility of creating both a cis molecule and a trans molecule. The small difference in orientation provides different properties for each molecule. The transform of isoprene occurs naturally in two substances, guadapercha and balada. 80% of guadapercha is the trans polymer of isoprene, and balada contains 100% of the trans polymer. The first person to really start investigating isoprene was Charles Goodyear. In 1834, Charles Goodyear began a series of experiments that set off a chain of events in the evolution of rubber. In his first attempts, he mixed dry powder with rubber so it could absorb extra moisture during hot weather. When this failed, his second attempt was to use nitric acid to treat the rubber. This turned into a seemingly dry, smooth material that Goodyear thought would hold up to the heat, and once again, this was unsuccessful. However, in his third attempt in the winter of 1839, he was experimenting with powdered sulfur as his drying agent. He accidentally dropped the mixture on a hot stove and recognized the potential. It was this version of rubber that he perfected in his vulcanization technique. In his version of rubber, he accidentally created the crosslink between rubber molecules and sulfur atoms. The sulfur atoms formed crosslinks that held the long rubber molecule chains in position. In 1867, Henry Alexander Wickham left the Amazon with thousands of seeds of Hevia brasiliensis, which later proved to be the most prolific source of rubber latex. With the help of botanist Joseph Hooker, from the original seeds, there were plantations set up in both England and Southeast Asia. By 1932, 98% of the rubber was grown in the Asian plantations, which proved to be a problem for the United States after the bombing at Pearl Harbor during World War II. The same strain was placed on the Germans during the First World War, which led the German government to see if they could synthetically create an equal, if not better, substitute. Their solution was styrene butadiene rubber. This served as an excellent substitute for natural rubber. In 1953, Carl Ziegler in Germany and Guido Nada in Italy further refined the production of synthetic rubber by adding a catalyst. They won a Nobel Prize in 1963 for their efforts. Through Ziegler and Nada, it was re realized that depending on the catalyst used in production, you could determine whether the rubber would be cis or trans. With all of the research done on the product, there are many applications for the isoprene polymer, such as tires, floors, wetsuits, life rafts, engines, hoses, cable coatings, splints, catheters, forceps, fillings in teeth and gums, erasers, and of course, rubber bands. Rubber revolutionized the way that we do many things in our lives, and the world would not be the place it was today without it. Thanks for watching.